Hey, what's up everybody? This is the Wheelman282 here again with another video. Uh, I know it's been a while since I made one. It's been a, it's been a long hiatus, uh, mostly due to it being winter time. Um, but I'm back again making this one. So uh, let's get right into it. Today we're going to be looking at a, an old calculator. Uh, this is a TI-450 electronic calculator. Normally, I'm not really a, a calculator guy. I, I, I like video games and computers mostly. Calculators aren't really my thing. Uh, I think they're kind of fascinating, the old ones, like the mechanical ones or the ones with Nixie tubes. But other than that, it's kind of it's more, really just mostly a fascination. Um, so I was out in a thrift store one day, and I just looked through what they had, and they had this thing here, and I thought it you know, looked kind of neat. Uh, checked it out, turned it on. It was it was it's kind of halfway working. Um, it'll do math. It's, it's got a, it's got some display problems, um, but really I just picked it up because it just looks so cool. It looks so 70s and retro and I don't know. Uh, it was only two dollars, so I thought, what the heck? I'll pick it up. Maybe uh, maybe, you know, maybe I could fix it, make a video out of it. Um, I just, uh, it's kind of it's kind of fascinating, really. I just kind of like it. It's just got this got this retro nasty 70s yellow color to it it's not supposed to be yellow like this I think it's supposed to be either eggshell or beige or white or something like that I'm not totally sure um, just kind of you know I looked up some information on the internet not a lot of information on this um, I got a date which is about 1973-74 kind of in that area um, this is uh, I think I think this was the first model Texas Instruments calculator that offered a memory function, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, yay, I guess. <laughs> it's kind of got some, it's got some functions on here that I have no idea what they do. Um, there's like this, this Sigma M function up, up here, I guess is maybe for memory. I have no idea. Over on this side, we have a, a button with K on it and RV um rs with an arrow i i don't know I, I don't have a manual for it i can't really find one so um if you know what these buttons do that you know comment down in, in the comment section i would love to to hear that um because I, I don't know what these buttons do not really again not really a calculator guy either so um that's my fault i guess um along with the research i was doing on the internet uh this particular model calculator has what's called a Panaplex 2 display. It's, it, that's just really marketing guff for it's basically a uh, gas discharge, sort of like a neon um, display. So I guess you could call it that. Where, you know, modern calculators today, they have a um, vacuum fluorescent display. This actually uses a, uh, like, kind of like a, um, kind of like a neon sign where it's got a, a gas inside of a, a closed glass chamber. And then you know the filaments go in and they they light up the numbers. It's a you know gas discharge. It's got like an orange hue to it when you when you look at the at the readout. It's actually very cool looking. Um, not as cool as Nixie tube, uh, but you know for what it is, it's uh, it's pretty interesting. At least for a non-calculator guy like myself. So uh, let's let's talk about what's wrong with it. Um, when I tested it at the thrift store, uh, it would display numbers and it would do math, but it had a problem with the display going out. Um, the Some of the keys are kind of sticky. Uh, maybe, maybe not the keys, but the switches are up here are definitely sticky. Um, so yeah, we'll have to clean those up. Uh, I've already taken this thing apart just to, you know, check it out real quick. God, this thing is made cheap as crap. I mean, maybe it's just, maybe that was just the 70s. Maybe that's just how they made stuff. I don't know, it's just not very well made inside. I, again, maybe it's just the era that this calculator came out of. Maybe that's why it's not manufactured very well inside. It could be that. Again, not a calculator guy. But, I don't know, it's, it's still a neat piece of history. Again, as I'm doing my research, uh, I've, I've only found like a, a few pictures of this thing online. Uh, again, not a lot of information. One website, uh, I think it was uh, datamath.org or Calcuseum. Uh, it was one of those two sites that it was 
rare, which I mean, that's very subjective and there's, I don't really know what that means. Um, one, one of those sites gave it a collector value eight out of 10. So again, very subjective. I'd have no idea what that means. Um, I tried to look up completed listings on eBay just to kind of get a reference of how much it might be worth. The only one I could find was in France and it didn't even sell. And I think it was 50 euros or something like that, um, whatever, whatever that converts to. But again, it didn't even sell. So, you know, I, I can't find a lot of information on this thing. Um, so if, if, any, if any of you calculator buffs out there uh, know some more information about it or can point me in the direction of where to get some more information, um, if you know maybe even a rough value of it, um, I would just be interested to know, to know that information. Um, I didn't buy this to sell it. I just bought it because it looked cool and I thought I could make a video out of it and, you know, just show it to the world. So, and if you have any information on it, just let me know. I'll be very interested to know that. So anyway, um, let's go ahead and um, take it apart. I'll show you the insides and uh, we'll dive into it. Real quickly, I just want to show you kind of what it looks like. Um, again, these are rare. So, you know, there's not a lot of information on this on the internet. So I just want to, I want to document it the best I can. Um, so uh, right here on the top, we have you know, the logo. It's kind of got some vents. Again, it's uh, nasty yellow. Uh, I'm going to try to refurbish this uh, with some uh, Retrobrite or the equivalent. Um, here we have uh, some status indicators. We have K, whatever that means, M for memory, um, EOF, I think that's an error light, like if you divide by zero, and then ROF, I have, uh, again, no idea what that is. Um, here's the function buttons. Uh, so we have our, our decimal place switch here at the top, our rounding function, and then this sigma M something. I don't know. Um, Cut your typical standard functions, you know, plus, uh, plus and equals, minus, memory functions, uh, regular crap numbers, and then here we have some other weird functions. K, R, V, don't know what that is. R, S, don't know what that is. And then we have some clear functions. I think C, A is like clear all or something like that, but I could be totally wrong. So again, if you know, let me know in the comment section. And then up here we have the badging for the TI-450. Uh, this side of the calculator, there's nothing. It just looks kind of cool like that on, on that side. Um, front is nothing. Here on the side we have the power switch. Here on the back is the, uh, the power cable in. So this actually accepts uh, you know AC power in 120 volts. Um, is there the uh, AC to DC transformer inside. Take a look here at the bottom. And uh, so there's the label on the bottom. There's the serial number, uh, 450056491. And then it operates on 120 volts, 50 to 60 hertz frequency, and uses 13 watts of power. And uh, 25 or 0.25 amps of current. Warning, disconnect power before removing cover. Oh gee, you think so? Oh, can't, never would have guessed that. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and take it apart real quick. There's four screws holding this top cover on. It's just uh, two here in the corner, and then the two, two here back uh, underneath this lip or whatever. And then that's it. And then the top of the cover just lifts right off, just like that. And here we have the grungy, nasty insides. It's also super cool looking. So, again, um, here are our nasty switches here that are, so they have soda spilled on them or whatever. They're just pretty nasty and stuck. Here is our Panaplex display. And this is a glass, this is a sealed glass container with whatever gas inside, I guess neon, I don't, I don't know what gas it is. 
Um, here's our indicator lights or our little indicator panel type thing here. And then here at the back we have our uh, AC to DC transformer. And real quickly, I'm going to take out these two screws and there's a plug back here that holds the, the logic board or it connects the logic board to the transformer. And then these two screws here hold the entire, God, this entire front piece or logic board in. So just undo those two screws, unplug this cable and the, this whole thing, this whole section just lifts right out. Um, and then the transformer here in the back screws into the actual base. So I'm gonna take these out really quick. And here's the base of the unit. So uh, my suspicion here is that the capacitors on this on the converter board here are completely dead because considering this thing was built in 1973-74 that makes it about 40 about 40 to 50 years old now so uh, I'm, I'm sure the capacitors are dead and that could be very well why the the screen is having some problems where it won't stay on all the time um, one thing I did read about these these Panaplex screens, or the, the readouts rather, they're not it's not really a screen, um, is that they operate on high voltage, like 180 volts. So if the capacitors are not doing their job of providing the correct voltage or or whatever um, to the readout, um, you know there's a good chance it won't work. So it could be just as simple as it needs to be recapped. Who knows? Um, you the bottom of this of the logic board really quick get this out of the way so this logic board is so awesome looking look at this look at this guys isn't that beautiful it is bright blue there is there's minimal mi minimal functionality here I mean <laughs> this is just a I, just a regular calculator which is some memory functions I mean god look at this it's, it's amazing looking god it's I don't know it's just so beautiful there's no no solder mask on this so these these all these traces are bare this is just bare metal they didn't even bother to put a solder mask on this thing um, so I'm I'm just kind of I haven't actually looked at these chips but I'm guessing these are your this is one of these is your processor the other one is a probably a um, a digital readout controller, more than likely. Could be wrong. And then maybe we have some some memory functions here uh, for the, uh, the to be able to store memory. Who knows? Um, here's the back of the of the readout. Here you can see the the neck where they uh, fill the the tube or whatever the, the the readout with gas, whatever that gas is. And then this is kind of strange. So we have this row of solder joints right here uh, uh, at the bottom of this thing. And that actually translates through a really strange ribbon cable to the buttons. So uh, it's, so technically you could take the screws out of this, this orange board here, flip it over, and then that would um, you know expose the bottom side of the main logic board. And you could desolder that the ribbon cable from that and you could work on this board if you wanted to you wouldn't necessarily have to desolder it's just there also the bottom side of this board is red this one here and the contrast is just so neat um, the bottom side of the, the the AC to DC converter board is also red so just like when you just lay the two beside it they just look so cool I'm, I can't get over the colors on this it's just really neat I don't know why it's just, just so retro and neat um, but yeah, there's the main logic board. Um, I wanted to start working on the, the AC to DC converter first because I think that's the, where the main problem is. Those caps definitely need to be replaced. And I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of have a hunch that might be the only problem with this calculator is it's just the cap, the capacitors aren't working properly. Um, probably nothing wrong with this board in general it just it's just really nasty and dirty it needs to be cleaned but otherwise 
it probably works fine. Um, that's my guess. So I'm gonna set this to, this to the side and take out the AC to DC converter real quick. So here's that. Like this. So when I said this thing was made cheap, what I was talking about um, was like the power switch and the, uh, the the power end socket right here. So the power switch isn't like actually like screwed into the plastic or anything. The plastic is actually melted around the switch. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. You can kind of see it right there. Yeah, that it's like melted around the switch just to hold it in place. And it's even then it's a little bit wobbly. And then I'll show you at once I get this board taken out, but this, the same thing uh, with the power socket here. It's just, it's, the plastic is, has been melted around the socket to hold it in place. Like they couldn't bother to take a couple of screws in it. I, mean, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's janky. It's, that's the best word for this. Janky. <laughs> In addition to that, these these wires on the on the power switch, I don't know. I, I think they're tack welded in, like, or not, not maybe spot welded in, or whatever you want to call it. So I tried to desolder this wire from the switch earlier just to get the board out, and I couldn't because I'm pretty sure this switch is spot welded or tack welded in, just like they just took a spot welder and went. Bzz, and that's how it is on at least on the switch um, <laughs> I, yeah I, again they couldn't be bothered to put some solder on there and solder it in it's I don't know it's kind of sad and it's definitely janky anyway uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take this board out and just kind of show you I did have to, I, I, like I said, I had this open before. I did have to take the glue off of these capacitors so I could read the values. So there was, I did have like a glue gun and they just like put glue across these three and then right here, they just, I don't know why they would glue that in. They're soldered in. Anyway, um, but yeah, that's, that's how it was. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take this out real quick or do my best to. It's kind of janky the way it's built. in there so it's kind of I don't know this thing is built in it's not really designed to be removable so got a uh, got three wires going to the socket back here two wires going to the switch and then all, all the wires are just soldered in so uh, I might have to desolder one of these wires to get this thing flipped over or maybe not oh, okay here we go so here's the bottom of the board. It looks pretty, it's actually really nice looking. Um, it's, again, it's kind of janky. They they like glued, they put like super glue or some sort of epoxy over these, some of these solder joints where you can't really get to them. If you needed to fix it, you couldn't unless without risking scraping the board. Um, over here in this side, it's, it's really scorched. I don't see any actual damage like um, like fried traces or whatever uh, it's just the board is just blackened I guess maybe from the heat of um, maybe this voltage regulator here or something not totally sure um, but it's just it's blackened it's scorched but there's no actual damage that I can find um, anyway so what we're going to be doing on this board is removing or replacing the capacitors I could, for some of these I couldn't find exact replacements, so I'm going to have to fudge, fudge the numbers a little bit. Um, but I, th I think I think I can get away with this, uh, especially this one. This is like 230 microfarads. Um, I, I couldn't even find one with that value on eBay. Uh, some of these other ones aren't so bad, um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and um, desolder. I think there's like a wire. I'll desolder this wire, and so I can flip the board over and actually work on it. Um, oh, here's that socket I was telling you about, where it's, um, see how it's just like melted in there? 
they just they melted plastic just to hold the thing in there it's oh man that just that just weirds me out it's who does this you know what are you, what are you doing what are you doing with your life all right don't no we can't use a screw let's just melt plastic on top of things and ugh. anyway so here's my capacitors it's just again these aren't I don't think some of these are exact values and I had to buy in bulk to actually get a decent price on this stuff but here's the capacitors so we're gonna go ahead and desolder these these four capacitors and replace them with new ones so I'm gonna fire up the soldering iron and we'll uh, go ahead and take this board out all right I got the board out um, I did have I just went ahead and desoldered uh, these two wires and then this one just kind of broke the I think the, the metal is getting kind of old or fatigued anyway so it just kind of broke off but no big deal I'll just solder it back on um, so yeah replacing the the four capacitors here I'm just gonna start this way and work that way so we flip this guy over um, first one we're gonna work on is uh, these two spots right here and put a little flux on there Looks right there. So this guy might come out. Yep, there we go. So here's the capacitor. This is pretty old. 470 microfarads at 12 volts, pretty average rating there. Um, notice the polarity on this. It's actually got a like a positive, I guess marking. Or I guess that stands for M, or M is for mark marking, positive marking. And then it's like the little indention here is the positive end, and then this would be the negative. So uh, there's that. I'm just going to go ahead and replace that one really quick. But first, uh, I always like to work with a clean board, so. I'm just going to clean these joints up. All right, so here is the replacement. This is 470, uh, there we go, 470 microfarad at 16 volts. Uh, not a quite exact match as far as voltage goes, but um, higher voltage is all, you know, doesn't really matter. As long as you don't go below, um, you know, what it were, whatever it was rated for. It's, in this case, it was 12 volts, rated for 12 volts. Um, you can always go higher on voltage, just don't go lower. Otherwise, the capacitance is the same. So, looking at the board here, it's pretty dirty, but the positive sign is uh, right here on this end. That means that this is the negative end. So, it translates to this being the positive end and this being the negative end. And Again, uh, the arrow points on this capacitor, the arrow points in this direction, so that makes this a negative end. So, I'm gonna go ahead and install this guy. All right, so there we go. It's a pretty good fit. Yeah, that'll work. In these two leads. Okay. So just to hold it in. And we're going to solder these two guys in. So there's that one done. As you can see, just fits right in place. I guess I should have oriented it a little bit better so you could read the rating without having to tilt this thing. You know, whatever. As long as it's in there. So, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these. Uh, again, these aren't a perfect match. So I have to do a little bit of uh, jury rigging, especially on this one. Um, but as soon as I get that done, I'll come back and I'll explain a little bit better. Okay, I just finished recapping the board. So real briefly, I'm just going to go over what I did. Um... You know, over on this side, I just, you know, replaced the caps, you know, no big deal, it's just, you know, simple. Just uh, pop out the old one, put the new one in, and you're done. 
Um, again, the voltages don't exactly match. Like the, this one was a uh, 12 volt um, cap. Um, I replaced it with a 16. No big deal. Um, the voltage on the, the big one here didn't exactly match. See, this big one here was uh, 160 volts DC. I had, the only one I could find for a reasonable price on eBay was, uh, let's say, 450 volts. Um, again, that's just a maximum voltage rating. It's not, it's not really important if you go higher. You just don't want to go lower. So, you know, you can get away with that kind of thing. Uh, over here on this side, I had to get creative. <laughs> so, like I said, this was a 230 microfarad uh, 50 volt capacitor that was in here originally. Um, could not find one for, for that value. So I had to come up with the next best thing, uh, which was to, to put two capacitors in parallel. Um, these two capacitors here are 120 microfarad at 50 volts each, or at 50 volts. Um, so putting them in parallel uh, effectively um, adds the, as the capacitance together. Um, so uh, I get a capa total capacitance of 240 microfarads at 50 volts. Uh, in this case, uh, the capacitance is 10 microfarads more than what was already in here. Uh, but since this is just a, a linear power supply, not that really big of a deal. We're not really dealing with uh, sensitive um, electronics with that deal with logic and things. This is just a power supply. So um, you can you can get away with putting with going with a little bit higher um, capacitance rating, uh, at least in this application. So you can kind of see what it did. I just um, I just uh, <laughs> took this top capacitor and just kind of wound it around the leads of this bottom one and just soldered it in. So uh, yeah, you, you gotta you, you can get creative if you need to, especially on old electronics where it's, it's kind of, sometimes it's hard to find specific replacement parts. Um, you can kind of fudge the numbers a little bit. But anyway, uh, let's. I'm gonna go ahead and put this put this guy back in the case, and we'll go ahead and test it out. I'm I'm really excited and kind of and, and curious to see if this is gonna work. Uh, hopefully, this is the only thing that was wrong with it. So. Uh, I hate this thing doesn't plug in. I, I want to see if I can find a way to like just, I don't know, just clip it in somehow so I don't have to solder the, the whole thing back in just in case this doesn't work. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm done. Um, yeah, let's let's go ahead and, and put it back in the case and go ahead and test it out. Okay, so um, I've just kind of got this kind of set in here just to test it really quick. Um, you know, like I said, I already replaced or recapped the, the, the AC to DC converter board. Um, I've just got, I, I had, and I haven't actually soldered it in yet either, um, just in case this doesn't work. Um, and I might need to test something else. So um, right now I've just kind of got this, um, just kind of, I got the wires held in place with some alligator clips. They don't, they don't actually go at anything on the other end. They're just, it's just holding things in. Um, you know, it's not connected to anything. It's just, just holding the wires in so I can test it really quick. Um, it's a little bit precarious uh, because we are dealing with AC voltage here, um, but I think I've got everything pretty well secure, so we should be all right. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut off the lamps here. And so we, when I turn this on, we should get uh, some display here. And there we go. Looks pretty cool. It's a little bit hard to tell on camera. I have to get a close-up shot in a minute. Um, but there's like this, there's just this orange glow. It's not, it's not your typical vacuum fluorescent display display on a calculator. It's just, I don't know, it's just this orange neon glow, and it looks so cool. I'm gonna test some, some test some things out real quick. I'm just do some math. Uh, 56 plus. Eight. Okay. See, I'm not sure what this K button does. So on the indicator, this first LED is K. So I don't know what it does. So if I press it, okay. So if I press K, the light light, light turns on. I don't know what it does though. Uh, maybe it's for potassium. That's my best guess. Um, 
RV right here. I'm guessing that's um, recreational vehicle. Um, RS, I don't know. Return to sender? Maybe it's like a backspace key? Let's try. Oh, it's a backspace key. Okay. Why would they call it RS? Um, let's see. 100 minus 50 is 50. Okay. So it seems to be functioning okay. Um, I'm not sure why it keeps adding things into memory. Maybe it's got something to do with the Sigma switch here. I'm not, I, I don't know. I remember when I was first testing this in, thr in the thrift store, the display would, you know, it would work, but it would, um, it would just eventually just go out and you'd have to turn the calculator off and then back on. So I don't know if it's going to keep doing that. Uh, I guess I'll test it a little bit more and just to see what happens and uh, we'll, we'll come back to it in a, in a few minutes. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes. Um, I just put all eights on the display just to make sure all the, all the uh, digits work, it's like everything's working fine. Uh, didn't cut off once in 20 minutes, um, whereas before I, I recapped it, it was. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this fixed. Um, I guess there's a slim chance that it might stop working, but you know who knows without further further testing. So uh, I want to go ahead and um, I'm not going to put it back together yet because I, it still needs to it still needs to be cleaned. Uh, I, I dumped some of the dust out of the base, but that's about it. Um, so I'm going to wash the base. I'm also going to clean off the the AC to DC converter. I'm going to wash the top of the case too. Um, this the uh the whatever the, the circuit board where the buttons attached is pretty dirty so i wanted to uh take the screws out and fold it over uh, just you know swab it out i'm gonna see about cleaning the keys some of these the keys are you know pretty okay as far as the switches go i mean uh, the switches seem okay the two buttons here is kind of sticky um so i'm going to take the key caps off and try to clean them the best i can um hopefully they're serviceable i don't know and hopefully I can get clean these, the uh, option switches up here at the top. So uh, that's kind of where it is right now. I'm going to go ahead and um, go wash the case real quick and get it drying. And um, I'll go ahead and uh, start cleaning the board. One thing I do want to show you, just to show you how cheaply this thing's made, is the, uh, the, the top of the case. So uh, this thing right here, uh, if we look inside, like the, the plastic is glued together, it's hot melted, um, you know, with like a like I got like a hot iron or something. It's uh, the plastic's hot, hot melted or welded together. Wow, God, this is not the best manufacturing job I've ever seen. There, they literally like, just glued these pieces in. Yeah, and I don't know, it, it's just made, it's just kind of made cheap. It looks good on the outside, but I don't know, it's just uh, not manufactured all that well. Like if, like, I can, you can just kind of feel the plastic, it's not actually stable, it's, it's kind of wobbly a little bit. That's <laughs> just, I don't know, that's funny. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wash the cases real quick. And uh, you know, while those are drying, I'll be cleaning up. We'll go ahead and clean up the main board, or I mean, the uh, the button board here, and the the uh, converter board at the back. Okay, yeah, so I'm working on cleaning this top circuit board here. Um, as you can see, it's pretty nasty. Um, I, I took the three screws out of the, I guess the the top of it, um, just to unhook it from the, the chassis and it just kind of folds over like this um, there's a right here there's like a ribbon a ribbon cable it's not really that it's just I don't know uh, as you can see the god the contrast on these two boards is really neat it's just like blue and red and it's I don't know it just looks cool to me I don't know why um, this side of the main board actually has solder mask um, on the traces. The opposite side does not. It's kind of strange that they didn't opt for that. I guess because, uh, 
uh, you, had, you have exposed contacts on here and you, they don't want the risk of, uh, you know, maybe a, a spark gap or something, you know, I don't know. I just, that's just my theory. Um, uh, it looks like you could use a little bit, a bit, little bit of cleaning maybe. Um, just a little bit of dirt in there. This side of the board looks okay. Um, turn around like this. Maybe you can see this. Uh, there's like a Texas Instruments uh, logo right here. It says Texas Instruments Incorporated. They got their logo on there and everything. So it looks like, um, I don't know that they manufactured all of this, but they got their logo like on everything. It's, it's kind of neat. Um, but anyway, so the, the actual, uh, these switch banks here, they screw in from the bottom side. And so I, I took a couple out. Um, so this is a switch bank or I guess that's what you call it. And uh, the switches on here are actually kind of neat. I've never seen this, this design before. So um, here, here on the board you have uh, you have a, a couple of, you just have like two contacts here. So on the switch, this, I guess uh, this top end right here would let rest on one contact. And um, when you actually push the switch in, it, it it pushes the spring straight like that as you push it in it, and then it makes contact with both at the same time, and that's what registers the button press. Uh, it's kind of neat. I've never seen a switch like that, so it's kind of cool. The actual, uh, the the function switches are your typical slider switch. Um, so they got this, I don't know, I don't know what you call it, it's just this little piece of metal right here. And it just, uh, it pops off the slider that and then that, you know that makes contacts with the uh, the various uh, contacts here on the board and I'm pretty I'm pretty sure someone spilled soda on this on this calculator because uh, when I took this switch off the board it was actually like nasty and stuck to the board it was just it's just sticky um, so I'm gonna have to do some cleaning on all these at least the switch casings this, uh, and in the contacts the the actual switches or the the contacts on the switches look okay I guess I'll wipe them down but the the contacts on the circuit board they need to be, definitely need to be cleaned um, we'll try to I'm gonna see if I can get these these slider switches out of the casing so I can actually uh, clean these guys I don't know that I can but I'll give it a shot um, so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and um, remove all these all this all the switch banks uh, clean everything up clean this top circuit board and then I'm going to clean uh, this this bottom side of the main board because it just I mean, it's not not dirty it's just kind of dusty I, I guess um, so yeah uh, as soon as I get done with that um, we'll continue so I went ahead and finished up cleaning the, the the top circuit board here as you can see it is like a huge world of difference after actually you know, cleaning it and making it not dirty. Um, I had to clean the thing like three times to get it actually come clean for once. It was like so packed with dirt and everything. It's it disgusting. Um, so here's the little little contact points I was telling you about. They're they're nothing more than just jumpers. It's just a piece of wire that goes from one uh, piece or one side of the circuit board to the other, and that's it. It's, that's all it is. It's a very simple design. Um, so, you know, you have your, your switch right here, um, if you get this to focus, this, you know, this little part of the switch sits on the, the contact, and then when you press the button down, this other end right here makes contact, and that registers the button press. So it would kind of, uh, sit like that, and then when you press it down, boom, contact. So, it's kind of interesting design there, never seen that before. And, um, these... The slider, or the, uh, I guess the function switches, I, I guess you'd say. Um, the way they're designed is pretty simple. Uh, here's your, I guess here's your switch housing. And you have a, here's, here's a spring that goes in either one of these holes, I don't know if it matters. And then you have like a little clicky ball or something. And it starts right there. And then on the bottom of the switch here, these the little ridges. Um, you know, it just slides in there, and then that's what makes it. That's what makes it click. And then 
on the bottom side, that's where you would have the um, you know, the contact that um, that slides. You know, when you when you move the slider. Here's the um, I don't know what you call this. This is like the post or something that comes out of the bottom of the switch here, and you know that's what drives the um, the contact on the on the you know the bottom of the switch. So it's pretty simple in design. Um, I just thought I'd show that out or show you guys how that uh, how that works. Again, just documenting the the calculator because there's hardly any documentation on this thing. Um, another thing I had to work on was let's see if I, is this um, this connector down here in the front or this ribbon cable or it's not really a ribbon cable it's just a bunch of connectors that connects this top board to the bottom one so it's 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 just some little pieces of metal really um, so when they manufactured this god they did a terrible job on this thing it's awful like so when I was like taking the switches off this top board and everything I was you know having to move this thing like it, it didn't break but the solder joints on the on the bottom side of this board were just so shoddy that some of these were just popping out I mean I don't know how this thing how this computer or how this calculator was still functioning so um, what I did was I just I um, I took I desoldered every one of these and I cleaned up the solder joints I cleaned up the pins to make them you know actually hold solder because they were corroded and I just I, I resoldered the entire thing um, at least on on the red board here um, I haven't done the blue board because if we flip this thing over um, the soldering job here on the on this side is actually not too bad it's not crappy like on the top board so I'm not going to bother with that but man God, I just I can't believe they did such a poor job soldering this thing in while I had this thing um, off I was checking some of the solder points on the main board here and I don't remember where it was but I, I found a few connections on here that were just almost completely dry uh, of solder they just they just weren't done properly so I went back in there sorry that was my phone uh, I went back in there and you know reflowed some of these joints um, just to make them work um, not that they weren't working before but they were just it's just poor manufacturing um, you also notice here some of this some of the solder mass is coming off of um, off of the traces here it was kind of like that before I started cleaning it but as I was cleaning it some of it started to come off even more so um, I cleaned it to a minimum I guess you'd say um, but yeah the, the way they manufactured this just wasn't really good overall um, kind of disappointed that you know Texas Instruments being you know, kind of a name brand um, I don't know if that they manufactured this you know, I could be completely wrong on that but I don't know they just didn't do a very good job I mean they did it they it passes you know it, as long as it functions it passed I guess but uh, I don't know I mean I'm, I'm just a hobbyist and I did better I you know I had to correct their mistakes so I don't know it's just I don't know it's a little bit disappointing but again maybe that's just the era that it came out of I don't know so anyway um, I'm working on installing the switches back in. I'm going to go ahead and clean the contacts on these. Some of them aren't, aren't bad. Some of them are they're not they're not bad, but they just need to be cleaned up a little bit. Um, also, the the function switches here are yellowed, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, retro bright those just to get them white before I install them because they do have to be installed um, you know, along with the switches before you can actually put the case back on. Um, so yeah oh and here's the um here are the actual switch bank housings i guess you know but when, but when i took this out they were just all like dingy and everything and i cleaned them up and they're all they're actually kind of shiny so <laughs> god you you just don't know how something how dirty something is until you've actually cleaned it and like geez so anyway um, i'm gonna go ahead and start putting the switch banks back in and um 
I'm gonna retro brought these function switches so I can go ahead and install those back in. And uh, we'll continue from there. All right, so I went ahead and put the switches back on. Um, again, I cleaned everything here. Also retro brought the, the function switches here and it turned out pretty good. Um, for the most part, everything works pretty well. This switch here is a little bit finicky. Um, it, it just doesn't work as smoothly as these. So you just move these. This, this one you kind of have to fight with a little bit, but overall it's not too bad. I guess for a, a calculator that's 50 years old, you know, what are you going to do? Um, so, yeah, I got, I got all the, the switches um, screwed back in. I've also got this, this top board screwed back in. So, you know, everything's uh, nice and secure. This module here is ready to go. So I'm gonna slide this out of the way real quick. And I've also installed the, uh, the converter, the AC to DC converter back into the bottom of the case. Um, cleaned it up a little bit, um, soldered in the wires, nothing really exciting. Uh, this, this wire that broke, I did have to strip it a little bit and then solder it back on. Um, I actually did a better job than what they did from the factory. This other wire that's soldered in or tacked in, it's, it's actually pretty, it's got a pretty strong joint, so I'm not going to mess with it. Um, but this one here on, this other one that I had to fix, it was almost ready to break anyway, so. Um, yeah, otherwise, uh, you know, pretty simple. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, reassemble the unit. So here's the case, or the top of the case after I uh, did some retro bright. Turned out okay, um, not totally pleased with it. Um, it's a little bit hard to see on camera, uh, but there's some blotchiness going on right here and some here on the top. I uh, don't know if you can see that, but it's there. Um, it's not too bad. Uh, I, I, I had to uh, I had to do this two times uh, because when I did it the first time, I, I missed some areas, so I just went ahead and redid the whole thing again. And it's, it's kind of turned out blotchy. I'm not sure if that's like a defect in the plastic mold or, or whatever, because I, you know, I definitely covered it all. Um, it's definitely not my not my fault for not covering it. So overall, it's not bad. I mean, it, it turned out um, pretty decently, I think. You see there. So it's a it's a nice beige color, not not piss yellow like it was. Um, I took extra care not to scratch up the the, the, um, the lens here, and uh, again, I just want to remind you that these are, God, this is glued together. What were they thinking? I mean, it's not totally glued. They got some, they've, you know, um, melted the plastic, hot pressed the plastic in, but man. Anyway, so let's go ahead and uh, assemble this unit. Here's our nearly completed calculator. Let me slip this guy on. And there we go. Uh, again, don't know, don't know if you could tell this, the keys, or the, excuse me, the number keys didn't exactly come out totally white. Some of them are still have a tint of yellow. So uh, I also, you know, gave these uh, two rounds, or, or two, two go rounds of, um, of the retro bike didn't totally make them white so you know whatever I, I guess the rest of the key came out uh, pretty good um, the blue keys uh, were kind of faded to begin with so they're they're not exactly this top one is kind of looking pretty faded the other ones aren't too bad um, the gray keys um, they look fine orange turned out good uh, overall not bad um, I wish I could have got the colors better 
but yeah, what are you gonna do? Switches seem to be working okay. So yeah. Now let's go ahead and put the screws in the bottom. Go ahead and finish it up and we'll uh, go ahead and plug it in and turn it on. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and test it out for you guys real quick. Um, the display doesn't show up real, real well, at least on camera in light. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my lamps off here. Uh, so if I turn this guy on, we have a zero and kind of hard to tell in person. It looks kind of, especially with a low light on the camera here, it looks kind of blocky. Um, not getting a lot of exposure here, but um, looks pretty cool in person. It's got a, just got a warm orange glow. Looks neat. Um, let's go ahead and test it real quick. I'm just going to do some, I'm going to set my decimal place to two. And so 25, is $25. And we'll go $5 minus and we get 20. I'm not sure exactly why we have three clear buttons here, but I'm sure if I had the manual, I could read it. Um, we can add uh, numbers to memory, so we'll I'll just add a nine, um, add to memory. So the uh, little, there you go, the little uh, memory light lights up. We can also turn on K. I have no idea what K is. I guess that's um, potassium enabled. So I guess that's a good thing. We can uh, clear memory. Let's see if we, uh, 25. Add to memory. You can also recall memory. So there's the memory functions working. Let's see. Let's turn our. Let's see. Let's remove our memory here. Let's see if we uh, divide by zero. We should get. Uh, I guess this. The last light says ROF. So I guess that's the error light. I was mistaken earlier. EOF. I have no idea what that is. Then. Um, so we should be able to backspace, so that's good. Again, I don't know what RV does, it just, uh, if anybody knows what, what some of these function keys do, um, I'll be very thankful. Let's do, uh, let's see, uh, $25 times 5%, so, okay, $1.25. Everything seems to be working. I wonder if I can test, let's move our decimal places up. Yeah, so decimal places seems to be working. Uh, our decimal place switch seems to be working all right. Um, so yeah, um, seems to be working pretty well. Um, I'm definitely pleased with this, guys. So again, the TI Texas Instruments TI 450 Panaplex 2 display. I uh, basically just needed a recap, and uh, the re restoration was a bonus, even though it didn't turn out quite as well as I had hoped. I think it's still a pretty cool calculator. Um, so yeah, if any, again, if anybody knows any information on this, or if they can maybe provide me with a service manual, um, I'd be super thankful because, you know, I just, I just think it's a cool calculator. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching guys. Uh, appreciate you guys subscribing and, uh, in the meantime, take care. Admit it, you did this in school.